Why are you here? Today's day 11. You are deep in it now. And what is keeping you here? What do you want to change, embrace, receive, allow? Okay. So when you practice yang, I mean, excuse me, yin, it is important that you don't just go right in to the yin poses. You need to give yourself just a little bit of something to warm up with. Not everybody agrees with me, um, but we're still stretching and we're still wanting gravity to help us. But a little bit of warmth is going to incubate the muscles so that we don't tear, especially if we fall or go into something too fast. Okay. So let's just let our bodies ground. Thinking about our root chakra, planting, meeting with the earth at any point of contact that we've allowed it to have. Remembering that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So, as we allow ourselves to relax our body with an erect spine, but relax our body into the earth, the more we embrace the earth with our seat, with our root chakra, the more it embraces us. The more love we shine out to the world, the more love shines back. In other videos, I've talked about the smile and how powerful it is when it really comes from inside, not the, you should smile more. No, not that, not that. Smiling with our hearts. Smiling with our root chakra, thanking Mother Earth for all that it does. Pick up your commitment. Let it swirl around you. Let it inform the work today. Day 11 of our Sunrise Yoga Challenge for Beginners, unleashing the magic of yoga. Okay, letting the eyes float open. Now we can start our five Tibetan rituals. Posters to the side. Okay, make sure I've got distance. And parallel to the ground, gaze on the ground, arms come up, rooting to rise into the shoulder socket, out through the fingertips. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Letting the spin catch you, eyes closed, body comes together. Now let's go to kill. Today, I am going to take it very easy. I'm in priestess phase, and so my body appreciates massive gentleness and care and tenderness and, and cuddling. <laughs> okay, so I've got my elbows pu pulling towards each other. They want to they be together. And I'm going to just reach up. My shoulders are pinned towards the heart. I'm gonna inhale. And this time I'm gonna do the um, big, the middle level, the intermediate level. So I'm gonna inhale and look at the sky. Exhale forward. Again, I'm going to take the more moderate path. This is more like a beginner's level. So I'm going to start here. Inhale. I mean, starting at the J. Inhale. Tap. <laughs> 
tabletop. Fingers pointing towards the feet. Legs a little bit wider than hip width. Elbows wanting to be together, pulling towards each other so that they're parallel. Eyes of the elbow pointing towards the front of the mat, pushing down to come up. Using that protective grip for our hands. Inhale. Do I'm going to take um. I'm going to take my gaze only this far, only to the sky. Inhale. But you work where you are. Oh, my arms were not wide enough again. You work where you are, not where I am, where you are. Inhale. And finally, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. I'm going to do the beginner's version with knees <clears throat> a little bit farther back than tabletop. Protective grip on my hands. Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. <clears throat> Inhale, <laughs> exhale, inhale, <laughs> exhale, and that's five, I believe. Now, let's begin with our first yin pose. Today we're going to do four poses as promised. We're going to begin with dragon pose. We're the warmest now that we're going to be for the rest of the practice. So dragon is the most, I would say, the most effortful, but none of these are highly effortful because they are very classic yin poses. So let's do it. What is that? There is a, some kind of a bug, but it's not a mosquito and that's all I care about. Okay, <clears throat> for dragon pose, we're going to start in tabletop, and then we're going to bring our left foot forward, and we're going to lean over. We're going to bring both hands into the inside of that left knee, so my shoulder is going to tuck beside my left knee. <clears throat> You might also know dragon as lizard pose. We say lizard in yang and dragon in yin. My two hands are gonna still use that protective grip because that's not about yin, that's just protection for the body. You're gonna walk this leg back. And from here, you can leave the foot tucked or you can let the foot lay flat. I think this is blocked by the pillows. We might need those in a minute, so I'm gonna keep those over here. <clears throat> so you can let the leg lay flat. I'm gonna go for laying flat. And now what you're going to do, we're in the pose now. If you're here, you won. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We're gonna stay here and we're gonna allow this moment across the hips to open up. <clears throat> you cannot open up if you do not have the right leg entirely rotated to face the mat. That means the eyes of the hip, the eye of the hip is facing the mat. The backside of the foot is facing the sky. The eye of the knee is facing the sky. <clears throat> you wanna go for that rotation. And as time goes by, you're going to let yourself come lower and lower to the ground. So using bolsters, <clears throat> you can start with. These bolsters are not particularly thick, but you can start with your two arms here. The whole time, though, you're squeezing your knee towards your shoulder. You're not letting it splay out. That's a different pose. That's a modification. Okay. It's really... This fly is really 
I'm surprised there's only one hot guy in here. <clears throat> okay, so this is your modified. As you open up, just don't just remember to keep the knee. The knee wants to um, squeeze towards your shoulder, so keep letting it, keep helping it do that. That's just for protection. We're not warm enough to rotate out. That's how you use your bolster for this pose. You could also put a bolster here. And let that <clears throat> help cue the hips to open up more. That is also an option. And lastly, you can put a bolster under your knee for padding. We have one more minute here. <clears throat> Just breathing, easy breath. And two hands come flat if they weren't flat before, if they eventually relaxed to not flat, to the um, arms instead. And now let's take the other side. So, same start. We're gonna start in tabletop with our knees a little bit farther than tabletop. So we're kind of like in a lunge. I think we're about to do a push up. And then we're going to bring the right foot to meet the left hand. We're gonna bring the shoulder so that it kisses. Let me show you head on. So that it kisses. It's tucked inside of the right shoulder, the right knee. And that's because there's another pose that this can graduate to that we will not be reviewing in this challenge. Ah, maybe we will, why not? I can find a place to put it, yeah. Okay, eyes of the elbows are pointing towards the short side of the mat. <clears throat> the time has begun. We're gonna relax here. And as we, as our legs loosen up, as the eyes of our hips loosen up, <clears throat> we will allow ourselves to melt closer and closer to the mat. Using bolsters as you wish. Remember, they can go under the hands to bring the earth closer to you. They can go under the knee for a little bit more support for the knee. They can go under these hips to bring the earth closer to the hip, the right hip, so that it, that point of contact will allow the hip to root and then naturally stretch and open up. I tell you guys this a lot, but one of the best things I ever learned from a yoga teacher was, I need a bolster, was um, she was very, 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 very flexible. And she said, she was flexible, but she wasn't unhealthy flexible, like a, 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 a circus kind of flexibility where you have to kind of break your body. It wasn't that kind of flexibility. It was a very strong flexibility that she had. And she said, flexibility is relaxation. It's not, it's not force. And that's what we're doing in Yen. We're relaxing, we're allowing. <clears throat> I'm giving support to my right arm, particularly because it's struggling to, if I should make, I should bring my hands up a little bit more. Oh. And let's push back and move to our next pose. How do you feel, huh? The hips have so much information stored in them. That's why pigeon is so important in yang, because when you're really, really warm, then it's helpful. Um, to have that releasing moment 
and we're going right into pigeon, but it, we call it, and again, it's called sleeping swan, swan and sleeping swan. So to get there, we're gonna do what we do in pigeon. Remember, you can start here. This is pigeon, I mean, excuse me, we're doing sleeping swan. This is swan, okay? Very similar to dragon, except that we're working for the hips for this side, but we're gonna be working um, in a different way with our support, with our right leg. So we're starting on our right side. Our right knee is pointing towards the short side of the mat. We are open up. We are already in the pose. The time has already begun for this pose. Now, if you are feeling open and not in a plate, not forced, but open, you can bring that knee towards the long side of the mat, the long right side of the mat. Now, here you can find a seat. If you can't find a seat, that's no problem. You can use a bolster and you can place the bolster here under the crotch. And now you have that supported moment. That feels really good to me. So I'm gonna keep that there. Now from here, you can, you're welcome to sleep your swan. And that's just there. Arms can go on either side. Arms can go um, out on either side, or you can make a pillow with your hand and allow and cradle your third eye on top of your hands. If you wanna take it, if you have a little bit farther to go, then like a little bit more openness, flex the foot, the right foot, and you can just walk it towards the short side, the long side of the left side of the mat and walking it towards parallel until it's parallel to the short side of the mat. And you don't want to take it past parallel because then you're going into Hanumanasana, you're going into split. And that is for another day. So wherever you are, make sure that if your foot is past the 45 degree mark, your right foot, you've got to flex it because you've got to protect your knee. That's why we do that. Okay, wherever you are, you're gonna sleep the pigeon. We have, gosh, this one went by really fast. We have 30 seconds. Poses start when you start. That's why even thinking, you know, today I'm going to come to this challenge. I don't even feel like it, I'm gonna go though, I'm gonna do it. And then you go, and then you're just just being here. That's you've done it. You've done it because you showed up. That's every pose in yoga. We have an entire class dedicated to the mantra. I have arrived. I am home. Because when you decide, then you have arrived. You are home. Okay, two hands pushing on either side away from the mat so that you can gracefully rise up. We're just going to now take dragonfly, which is a side split. And we're gonna use that to transition to the other side of sleeping swan. So, Dragonfly is very simple. Our legs are not going to, our toes are not, we're not gonna activate through our toes, um, but we are going to just open as comfortably as we can um, without uh, force, obviously. So we're gonna seat, I'm gonna just kind of move, shift the, anything that's between me and my sits bones, I'm gonna move them away physically so that my sits bones are in contact with the mat. My legs are at the corners of each of the mats, but you're welcome to have your legs as close together or as far apart as is comfortable. And let's work our way down. So I'm gonna start with a bolster and I'm just going to start here. And as things open up, especially in my inner thighs, then I will make my way towards flat on the ground. 
in hot yoga, in a yen hot yoga, you can end up <laughs> like in the ground. It's amazing how far you can stretch. I love hot yoga. I love it. But it does um, take you a little bit. I, I would say don't make a long-term practice of it because you could injure your body for the later years of your life. There are consequences um, to becoming a rubber band. <laughs> but it's so, so lovely, especially if you are, if you really like to push your limits. It's a really wonderful, hot yoga is so wonderful for that. I had a teacher, he would call us um, pain junkies. He said, okay, and now the pain junkie version of the pose. <laughs> mm, amazing. It's just opening up. How will your walk feel? How will your life feel with these released, relaxed inner thighs? Okay, let's push down to come up and let's take a swan and then sweet sleeping swan on the other side. So this time we're going to get into the pose in a little bit of a different way. This looks like this poor aloe. It needs a little bit more support. Mm. Okay, I'll have to handle that later. Okay, so we're going to get into it in a bit of a different way. You're going to start with um, swastika, is what we call it in the U.S. And interestingly enough, in Germany, it's called Frieden's pose, which means peace. Um, but we're going to start here. And so if you know that you're comfortable to keep your leg parallel to the short side of the mat in sleep in swan and sleeping swan, then you can start here and just simply adjust your body into the pose. If this is not where you're going to be, then we're just going to work our way back. So look, I've got two bent knees there. I've got two flexed feet. And now I'm going to just Unflex the foot, and I'm going to bring it down towards pointed, back to where we started in the other pose. And then I'm going to shift my hips, squaring them towards the short side of the mat. And here is a great place for a bolster. And now I'm going to go as close as I need to go so that I have a comfortable pigeon pose so that I can really let gravity do its thing instead of my mind telling me where I need to be. And from any place, from having your leg at perfectly parallel to the mat to right now, let's sleep the pose. Let's sleep the swan. So working your way down, the entire back leg is facing the sky. The entire back of the right leg is facing the sky, the eye of the knee, the bottom of the right foot facing the sky. And you're just letting, letting the pose happen. It started as soon as we started. As soon as we said, okay, we're gonna get into Sleeping Swan, the pose began. So much opens up. So much more opens up in gentleness. It is remarkable to me. And starting our day with gentleness like this and feeling the effects of these passive releases, it literally felt like my legs were unlocking, like rooms were being unlocked consecutively on their own. It's amazing. Imagine what else you can unlock within yourself 
in connection with others when you come with gentleness as the foundation of your interactions. You're here, so it's clear that you, that that matters to you. Gentleness and technicality, those are two things that matter so much to me in yoga. Okay, let's come up, two hands push against the ground, and let's come to our final yin pose. This is a hybrid. So it's almost like Shavasana, but it's not. It's called butterfly, and it's not Shavasana. Um, but since we are right at time, although we did start a little bit late, then I'm going to give myself those few minutes, and I'll edit so that you don't have to worry about the 30-minute mark. But we're going to do our, our last pose is butterfly. And for butterfly, you're just bringing the palms of the feet together. And if it was young, we would grab the arms, I mean, we would grab the uh, ankles with our hands or a strap. And we would reach up and then um, bend forward or reach up and then bend back with the strap. But we're just going to ease ourselves down putting a bolster under each knee if the two knees are not naturally touching the ground. And then you're gonna ease your way down. You can stop here or you can take it all the way back. If you're taking it all the way back, it would help to have one more support under your lower back, especially if you happen to have a sway back like me. And if you don't have another bolster, then you can sort of tip your um, pelvis towards the sky to give yourself a little bit more grounding so that you're not squeezing too much into that um, somewhat weak point. The lower back can be a very weak point. Holds a lot of energy and sometimes it's too much that we make the lower back contain. So do your best to support it. A bolster is a really good idea. And as your knees open up, pull the bolsters further and further away. But try to keep the knees in contact with the, um, the uh, yeah, the side of the knees facing the ground. Try to keep them in contact with something until they are comfortably on the ground. It's 6.30 in the morning, so the chances of my knees being comfortably on the ground is extremely are extremely low um but it's also yin yoga so gravity is going to do what it's going to do it's the number 9.8 meters per second squared 16.2 feet per second squared that is the <coughs> excuse me force of gravity consistently keeping us on earth. <coughs> Excuse me. And from here, just let the body relax to show us. And now you've come to the end of your 11th day. 
wiggle your toes. Well, your 11th exercise of the 30-day challenge. Wiggle your toes, your fingers. Turn to your right side. Push against the ground to bring yourself to seated. Bolster for your hips if you like to have them open a little bit. And just recommit to your devotion. Recommit to the question, the thing you wish to embrace. Letting the eyes float close to go within. Bring your left hand to your heart. Feminine energy, left side receiving. Bring your right hand to your belly. Masculine energy, right side. Pushing, doing, looking, scanning. Pride. Do one inhale, pushing both of those away from your body, pushing both hands with the inhale. Sending breath to both those places and exhale. Allow those two hands to hug the body. Allow the two hands to hug the back of the shoulders. Give yourself a little hug and bring the hands to prayer. Thank you for joining me on this 11th day of our 30-day challenge. I wish you unleashed magic and, of course, joy, ease, space, and grace. Namaste.